Hi, hope everyone's having a great weekend. I uh, just wanted to go over a quick tip for you all today. Um, my quick, quick tip for today is how do you do a chamfer using a ball mill? Now, why would you want to do a chamfer using a ball mill? Well, there are times where you may need to. You may not have a chamfer mill that's big enough to be able to do that chamfer that you've got. Or perhaps you've got a chamfer that's an, at an odd angle and you can't buy a chamfer mill at that angle or perhaps you don't have one at that angle. And to be honest, there's no point buying one. Um, the ability is there with Infusion to be able to uh, do a chamfer with a ball mill. So what I'm going to do today is just really quickly run through a really easy way to do this. Um, so let's get right into it. Cool, so in Fusion here, what I've done is I've just created a really uh, simple part. Uh, it's just a, just a block, it's about 30 millimeters high um, by, one, by 200 wide or deep by 100. Now, what I've done here is I have just added some fillets to the corners there, just to clean it up a little bit and then I have added the, that infamous chamfer to see how I can um, chamfer that using a ball mill. Cool, I'll just turn my sketch off. Now, um, what we're going to do is just jump straight into the manufacturer environment. Um, I've already done a setup here. Um, I will, if, for, for those of you that don't know how to do a setup, I will uh, walk through that in a future video. Now if I click edit, I'll just show you what I've done. I've got my uh, stock box point here. Um, X-axis is obviously pointing across the part and my y-axis is pointing up and down there. Um, jump into stock there, uh, side stock offset is just 10 millimeters and my top stock offset is just one millimeter. I'm just using, a, uh, under mode, I'm just using a relative size box. Cool, so there are the stock dimensions there anyway. What I'll do once this video is finished uh, is there, down the bottom in the video description I'll leave a link for this part so everyone can, can uh, click on the link and download the part and have a look at what settings that I've used. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is just jump up to 3D toolpaths. Now remember one of the cool things about why 3D toolpaths is 3D toolpaths have the ability to recognise geometry. Um, so with a 3D toolpath, rather than telling it what to cut, you tell it what not to cut. You need to contain that tool within a boundary. So I'm just going to go down to 3D Scallop. Now Scallop is, uh, is a toolpath that's going to work really well for this. Again, you get these little um, pop-ups that show up explaining what that toolpath does. Make sure you do read them. Um, they are really helpful and they're good little reminders of why you would use a particular kind of toolpath. So I'm just going to click on Scallop. Now first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Tool here. I'm going to select go down to my ChipX tool library here and I'm just going to select a 6mm ball mill. Cool. Now I'm just going to press OK. Now I'm not really going to get into feeds and speeds in this video. Um, I, I hope to do that again in a future video. Um, but today I just wanted to demonstrate how to, how to achieve this chamfer with a ball mill. So I'm just going to jump over to my geometry tab. First off, if I was to just press OK and watch this tool path load now. Now you'll see what will happen. It'll actually load and it will machine the top of the part and it will machine around the outside of the part as well. That's not what I'm wanting to achieve here. So what I'm going to do, right click on it again. Um, that's not the most efficient way to do things. Again, because the top of that a ball mill is going to have to cut twice as many times or three times as many times to be able to smooth the top of that part off. Again, um, the, your best bet is to use a little fly cutter or to use an end mill to be able to, to um, clean the top of that part up. Or perhaps you don't want to clean the top of the part up because that is the top of the material. So what I'm going to do here, jump over to geometry. Now under geometry, this is one of the cool things about 3D toolpaths is you contain the toolpath. So I'm going to jump into machining boundary. Now, Select the little drop down. Now there's different ways to select a boundary. Um, the way that I prefer to select a boundary is to use a selection. Um, now a selection is going to keep it within the bounds that I've told it to stay within. Again, read the description, really important. Um, it's going to help you uh, understand what, what the different options are that uh, are available to you. So under selection, it's now brought up this other little option here, which is, what is my machining boundary? I like to think of Fusion as it's asking me questions. I think um, that's, the, that's the way that I choose to explain it, and uh, 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 hopefully you guys find, um, find that really easy as well. So I'm going to select two boundaries. One boundary is going to be this top, because I don't want it to machine the top. 
Next boundary is going to be this bottom edge, again, because I don't want it to machine the side of my part. Cool. Now if I was to just come in here and press OK, that'll work great. Now one of the problems here, if I was to come and push Simulate, I'll turn my stock off here, and I will turn on Show Points. What I'll do is I will jump the tool down to this point. Now one of the cool things within the Simulate option here with Infusion is you can turn on show points. Now what show points again is allowing you to do is these are individual points that you can either click on but most importantly these are actually individual moves that are individual lines that are within the g-code that the machine's being told to do. So you can look over here that there's quite a lot of lines down here. Now this is something that we'll get into at a later date but this is um, there, there are times where if there's too many points um, a machine can get confused depending on how much memory the machine's got. I know this is one of the reasons why a lot of older CNC machines aren't able to run 3D code is because of the file size, the sheer amount of lines that are in that file um, that stop them from doing that. It's not because the hardware's not capable of doing it, it's most of the time because uh, the, the, the sheer file size the machine can't handle it. Cool. So one problem here is we're down at that bottom line, but you can see that the end mill has actually not gone to the bottom of the chamfer. Now, again, that's a problem because what we're hoping to achieve with what we're doing here is to be able to chamfer all the way to the bottom, and as you can clearly see that it's not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is right-click back on that toolpath again, come back up to Edit, come back, back to Geometry. Now there's another option here called Contact Point Boundary. Now what Contact Point, point Boundary is, is it's going to move that that boundary to the edge of the edge of the tool basically. Um, so it will continue to contact all the way down to the boundary of my selection. So again, remember to read what the read these little um, tips. They are, they are really helpful and um, they'll help give you little reminders. I use them all the time. Um, and, yeah. Cool. Now if I press OK, watch that toolpath reload. Cool. Now you see you've got a toolpath all the way down here and someone might look at this and go, but that's, I don't want it to go that low. But let's come up and do a simulation again. Let's find a point to click on and we'll have a look. There we go. That tool is just sitting below that. Now it might look a little bit odd there, so what I'll do is I'll find a different point to click on. Uh, click on that point there. And I'll come up and select this. We'll come zoom up and look at that tool. So the tool's going all the way to that bottom edge now. Now if I was to just come in here and I was to turn my stock back on and I was to press play and simulate that. Now one problem that we're going to see here as well is we've got these little tiny ridges. Now there's no, no point chamfering it if we're going to have little ridges. It's not a chamfer at the end of the day. So again I can come back up, click edit on the toolpath, I can come over now to my passes tab. Now under the passes tab I have the option to change my step over. So I'm going to reduce my step over now um, down to 0.5 millimetres. That's still going to leave little tiny ridges, but the ridges definitely aren't going to be as big and pronounced as what they are here. If you're trying to get a, a really, really smooth wall, um, you can reduce that, but one thing you've got to remember when you do reduce that step over is that it is going to take a lot longer. If you're, I was to reduce that down to 0.25 millimetres, the toolpath is going to take twice as long to cut. So again, it really depends on what kind of material you're cutting. I've got really, ha I've had really good success in, in things like plywood um, using, using sort of a 0.5 to 0.8 uh, millimeter step over. Um, in aluminium when I'm trying to get a really fine finish on it and I'm not going to finish it with sandpaper or finish it with bead blasting it, um, generally I'll go down to a 0.2 or even a 0.15 millimeter step over. There are parts such as the Vertigo Dust Shoe. Um, if you were to jump on the website and look on the, look at the Vertigo Dust Shoe, that front of it was done, the whole front of it was done using this method um, to be able to get a really nice finish around the front of it. Cool. So if I was to come in here and simulate that now, we'll leave the stock on, just press play, zoom, speed that up a bit. If I was to come down the side here, just have a look at the part. Now there are little ridges, but the ridges are a lot um, less noticeable now and a lot less pronounced. So um, again, to fix that up, it'd just be a matter of coming back into, right clicking on, Scott, on our toolpath again, 
going back into the Passes tab and uh, reducing that step over a little bit. Cool. Now, one problem you might see um, when doing these kinds of toolpaths, if I was to add some additional offset to this, say one millimetre offset, there we go. What it's done now is it's machined all the way down to the bottom. Now, for whatever reason, if you are machining a part that perhaps has broken geometry or it um, is, is not very clean lines, uh, quite often you'll see, even if you use containment, um, even if you use contact point boundary, you will find that it'll drop off down the edge. So one way to get around that is to come back up to additional offset and do a negative offset. So what I'll do here is I'll just go negative 0.001. And what that means is it's going to keep the tool or keep the, cont the tool containment boundary 0.001 on the inside of that. Um, if you're machining an STL file, for instance, um, you may find that you you need to reduce that down even um, re reduce that down even more. So you may need to go negative 0.1, for instance, if it's say an STL file. Um, uh, an ST STL is quite often or OBJ files when you're machining them. Quite often the geometry on them just isn't very good at all, um, especially not for CNC routing. So this is just a quick tip. Um, hope everyone has learnt something from this. And again, in the future, I hope to do more of these little. Uh, you know, really short, quick tips, um, and and again, uh, I'll, I'll link the link the video down in the description, um, and the file for this. Sorry, I'll link the file for this down in the description. So um, make sure you click on it. Have a look at the settings that I've used. Ask fire fire questions away. Um, again, this is a great sort of a great little toolpath that I use all the time, um, whether it be on the house or on our little Vertigo routers to get really clean finishes. Um, it means I can use one tool or perhaps use tool, two tools to be able to machine a part um, rather than having to throw in my chamfer mill as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully everyone has a has a great day and great evening and um, till next time.